This is Chris, your friendly neighborhood Minnesota comic geek, here with my haul video slash recap from FallCon 2024. Uh, before I get started, I would ask that if you enjoy this type of comic book related content, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. And if you enjoy talking comics, then comment below. All right, let's get into it. So it is Sunday morning, October 13th, uh, the day after the Saturday day of FallCon here in Minnesota. For those uh, Minnesota residents who don't know, this is the Minnesota Comic Book Association's kind of return to the grandstands at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. During COVID, they canceled their uh, spring con and fall con that year and then kind of took a hiatus and then finally kind of returned last spring, this spring, with spring con, but that was held out in Woodbury. And I have a video of my uh, haul from that show, but for someone like me who has been going to the spring and fall cons at the grandstands for going on two decades now if not longer there's something that i really enjoy about it being held at the grandstands um on the, on the state fairgrounds just driving there walking up like just the the large kind of space of it all um you know it's it, a bit of nostalgia is involved i overall had a good time like i always do i came away with a decent haul of comics i'm going to kind of limit this video to the the actual comic books and I, i'm i'm going to do a separate video where i kind of talk about my thoughts of walking around and seeing the the vendors and prices and stuff and what was offered and what wasn't. I kind of went in with a, a different objective than I normally do. In the past, it was all almost all dollar bin focused, dollar bin centric, like just trying to get as many comics for as cheap as possible. This time I, I was a bit more selective like at the outset so but I didn't I did end up leaving with some uh slightly higher price books than I normally would buy <laughs> some of you might be will be watching if you like they're the books that I'm showing aren't that high price so it's all relative um so I'm gonna start with kind of my favorite purchases um that weren't necessarily out of the dollar bins these were books that slightly higher priced or they fit a um a specific collecting objective so i'm going to start um with the uncanny x-men books that i got that were part of my 2024 collecting goals to kind of work on my the chunk of 100 to 200 missing issues from that run for me so I, I actually got a few of them uh, i got uh issue 158 for five bucks this is the second appearance of rogue i got 159 for two dollars this was this is uh where storm becomes a vampire after being bit by dracula uh issue 171 for 10 bucks this is where rogue officially joins the X-Men. Issue 210. This has the first cameo appearance of the Marauders for two bucks. And issue 212 for two bucks. This is the first battle between Sabretooth and Wolverine within their history. Not necessarily the first time it appears in comic book form. Yeah, ended up getting, crossing off five, five issues from, um, my uncanny x-men run that i needed so i'm really happy about that next up i i have 
uh, almost a full run of wizard issues. So I've slowly been working on crossing off missing ones. And it's, it's nice that I'm starting to see wizard magazines in available and in dollar bins at conventions and shows. I hope they become more prevalent so that I can work on crossing off and completing my wizard run of issues. I got issue 47, which I needed um, for uh, $1. And then I already had 94, um, but I didn't have the Adam Hughes cover, which I really want. Uh, so I got both of these for $1 piece. And so I had been looking on eBay for this specific issue. And if I had gone that route, it was going to probably cost me like 15 to $20 all, all in for to acquire this issue. So I was super stoked uh, yesterday when I was digging through dollar bins and came across this right away. And I was like, yep, grab it. It's mine. <laughs> So then I, as I was walking around looking through bins, I came across Battle Chasers number one for $10. It's probably a mid to low high grade in its condition. So $10 is a great price point. Anytime I can find uh, Battle Chasers number one for under $20 to $25, I'm going to buy it. I love, love Joe Matarera. I love this series. And like I said, anytime I can find issue one for like half of what it kind of goes for, I'm going to buy it. Dark Batman Dark Knight Returns number three. This is one, like this is the first cover appearance of Carrie Kelly. Um, saw it for six bucks. Again, anytime I come across any of the four Bat, uh, Dark Knight Returns books for under $25 to $30, I'm probably going to buy it. And if I find one for $6, it's an instant purchase. Like, it's just, I was seeing walking around yesterday books two, three, and four, anywhere from $25 to $50. Like, they were all just kind of in that range. And then I came across this one in, in the bins and it's in almost perfect condition. Six bucks. It's a no brainer for me. Catwoman number 44. Ended up getting this one for 20% off. Um, so they rounded it down to $6. This is one of like three remaining Catwoman Adam Hughes run covers that I needed. So really happy to uh, get this one. I still need issue 51, the mugshot one that's going to be the most expensive one of the Adam Hughes covers, and issue 80. So yeah, really happy to tick this one off the, the list and almost, like I said, almost have a complete Adam Hughes Catwoman run. This one, this is probably my favorite purchase from yesterday. It was the last book that I came across before I had to leave. I was just randomly stopped at uh, one dealer's booth. He had uh, an actual like really, really good selection of kind of early modern to modern comics that were reasonably priced based on everything I had been seeing yesterday. So he had a $35 price tag, uh, tag on this book, which is already for this book is discounted because it kind of goes for 40, between 40 and 50 ish dollars raw. And he also had a deal of, um, I think it was 25% off of the marked price. So after that discount ended up getting this book for $26 which is a absolute steal because it's in great condition this for the Adam Hughes Tomb Raider run of covers this is the most expensive one 
and it's going to be the hardest one to acquire. So if I've seen it in comic shops or whatever, I've never seen it for less than $40. This was a, a desired purchase for my Adam Hughes collecting goal. I love this cover. This, this one and the final issue are the two kind of high, like are going to be the two higher priced books in the the set that he did so so happy to add this one to the collection it's an absolutely stunning cover i love it um so yeah i was able to uh, yeah get this one god i love it it's it's so good um and like i said 26 dollars is an absolute steal so this video kind of already got a little too long uh i think i'm gonna break this the videos up into two different ones and kind of run through my cheaper purchases um the dollar bin purchases in a second video for later in the week so uh with that i'll kind of end this one what do you think of this selection of purchases that i got and the the prices i got at them got them at yeah so thanks for watching and again if you enjoyed this type of comic book related content please give the video a thumbs up hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel until next time comment below and let's talk comics bye